It's time to get started. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Adrian Huang from Lenovo Infrastructure Solution Group ISG. Um, this session talks about um, interrupt delivery configuration in Linux kernel and how the Linux kernel interacts with the underlying hardware such as IOAPC and MSI device. Here's a quick overview of what I will cover today. A high level view of a Linux kernel interrupt handling will be illustrated. Interrupt a descriptor table, IDT, configuration in Linux kernel, where um, the interrupt handlers in IDT will be examined by using GDB tool. Two interrupt delivery approaches, PIN-based and MSI, which covers um, interrupt delivery configuration. For PIN-based approach, I will show how to configure um, the I.O. EPIC redirection reter table. For MSI device, I will show how to configure the vector table of the MSI device. When calling the function request IRQ uh, by the device driver, have you ever wondered how does the Linux kernel find the best CPU and the vector number for the, for the, the upcoming interrupts? Difference about how IRQ vector and IRQ number will be uh, discussed. And IRQ can be also called Linux IRQ number or VIRQ stands for virtual IRQ. Here is the system configuration. Um, kernel version 6.7 with the QMU guest OS. Two socket processors and each, uh, each processor has four cores. All address randomization features are disabled. This GitHub link uh, includes um, the, the guest OS environment demonstrated in this session. So if you are interested, uh, feel free to check it out. Overview of Linux kernel interrupt handling. The top one, this one, is the pin-based approach leveraged by IO Epic. The bottom one is the MSI approach. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, if this ACP device, the IRQ number is 9, uh, generates an interrupt. This interrupt received by this IO Epic hardware. And then this IO Epic hardware locate the corresponding entry from its redirection table, so for this one, to find out the vector number and its destination ID. The target, the target processor uh, with this destination ID 2 accept this interrupt and then execute the, the common interrupt routines to locate the corresponding, the important data structure. The name is IRQ descriptor in the Linux kernel interrupt framework. After that, uh, eventually the, the ISR registered by the device driver will be called. For MSI approach, uh, when a MSI device uh, would like to generate an interrupt, basically it just simply write the data to a special address so that the target CPU can accept at least interrupt, execute the common interrupt to Teams and ISR. Okay, so two questions will be addressed. The first one is how does a CPU execute the handlers such as common interrupt Teams and ISR? The second one is how does, a interrupt, how does an interrupt route to the target CPU? Okay, basically the Linux kernel has the criteria to find out the best CPU. So I will also discuss this one later. IDT configuration in Linux kernel. Uh, there are uh, 256 entries in IDT. And IDT is partitioned into three parts. 32 exception vectors, as shown here, range from vector 0 to 31. The second one is 204 vectors, uh, 204 comma vectors as shown here, and those vectors mainly for uh, ISA registered by device driver as shown here. The last one is um, 20 EPIC and SMP vectors as shown here. They are mainly for IPI, EPIC timer, and so on. 
So the next question, next question is that um, how does a CPU execute an interrupt or exception handler? Uh, here is a scenario. For example, um, when vector zero divide error exception happens, how does a CPU find this exception address and execute? Okay, essentially, um, IDT entry gets, gets the offset of exception handler, while GD, uh, global descriptor table entry, GDT, gets the base address, as shown this one, segment descriptor to get the base address. After that, um, the exception handler address can be calculated. So next, let's walk through the table traversal step by step. First, uh, we need to uh, get the base address of uh, IDT. As this GDP comment show, the base address is like this. So the, this screenshot uh, print the content of vector zero, I show here, vector zero. So that's the vector zero. And each IDT occupies 16 bytes, okay? As shown here, by offset zero, by offset four, by offset eight and 12. Two important fields, the offset field, just like I mentioned in the previous slide. And the second field is segment selector. Segment selector is used to index the GDT entry, as shown here, this one. So uh, based, on the, on the, based on this content, the offset, uh, the, the offset is this one, okay? And segment selector is um, one zero in hash number. Next, we need to get the content of this segment descriptor. But first, we need to get the base address of GDT, as this comment show. And this, and, sorry, and this, and this, uh, this GDP screenshot print, uh, prints the content of this segment descriptor, okay. And each GDT uh, entry occupies eight bytes, as shown here, by offset zero and four. Again, based on the content of the, this, this segment descriptor, um, that uh, is a 64-bit code, and the type is called, the type field is shown here, okay. And based on the type, uh, is a core segment, SQ, read, and SS. The base address is zero. Okay, now we get the base address and the offset. So here is the result, this one. And this GDP uh, uh, comment, uh, this GDP screenshot just want to confirm that if this address is for divide error exception handler. Okay. Okay. During uh, during kernel initialization, um, this function configure the exception vectors uh, show here, and the entry point. The entry point is the entry stop written in assembly language, and then call the C function implementation. The same concept applies to common vector entry stops. Um, the entry stop implementation is quite simple, just two steps. Step number one pushes uh, vector number to stake. Step number two jumps to uh, list exception, uh, list, this, this handler. And the job of this handler is to execute um, the ISA registered by device driver. This screenshot um, prints the content of vector 32, I show here, this one, in order to get uh, the handler address. And the, the, uh, this is the handler address. The next, uh, the next screenshot shows that um, it dump the uh, assembly instructions for this handler. Confirm that push and jump instruction are in this handler. Okay, and this slide illustrates that um, exception vectors, common vectors, and EPIC SMP handlers vectors are configured during kernel initialization. And here are the entry stuff for your reference. And please know that um, common vectors and epic SMP vectors are configured in this um, function. Okay, um, let's move on. Base, 
uh, pin based de interrupt delivery and MSI interrupt delivery. As we know, um, uh, PCI MSI X device um, want to, uh, if, if, if a PCI device wants to generate interrupt, it just simply write the data to a special address, right? And so that uh, the Taki CPU can accept this um, interrupt. For pin-based approach, uh, the device uh, generates an interrupt by asserting the physical pin. And IO Epic forward this interrupt to the target CPU. And this topology does not have the IOMU hardware, while the right hand side has uh, the IOMU hardware for interrupt remapping. And know that uh, the, the example demonstrated in this session is based on this topology without IOMU. This slide uh, just want to illustrate the concept of IRQ domain hierarchy introduced in this kernel in order to comply with the hierarchical interrupt controllers. For example, this IRQ is the child uh, interrupt controller, while the, the local EPIC is the parent interrupt controller. So, this IO EPIC is the child IRQ domain. The local EPIC is the parent IRQ domain. Okay. And for this MSI device, it's the trial domain and the local EPIC is the parent IRQ domain. Pin base interrupt delivery. Here's an overview. Uh, just like I mentioned in the pre previous slide, when uh, this ACPI device generates uh, an interrupt, uh, IO EPIC hardware locates the list entry and delivers an interrupt message along with uh, this vector number 32 and the destination logical epic ID 2. The processor uh, with the logical epic ID 2, this one, accept the list interrupt and then decode the vector 32 in IDT in order to find out the corresponding, uh, corresponding handler. So uh, this, uh, this, the function is sm comma interrupt. And this handler is used to locate this important data structure introduced in this kernel, IRQ descriptor from the vector number 32, so that um, the corresponding ISR can be called. Okay. Next, uh, let's see how this kernel configures the uh, IO epic reiteration table. IDT and the related data structures. Configuration breakdown. Uh, two phases. Um, during kernel in in this phase, it allocate uh, IRQ structures for 16 ISA interrupts. The IRQ number range from 0 to 15. During a request uh, IRQ phase uh, coded by device driver, is to find the best CPU and a vector number. The final step is to write the corresponding IO EPIC routing entry in the, in the reiteration table. Okay, during kernel in need, um, this kernel allocates uh, 16 IRQ uh, descriptor structures and add them to sparse IRQ maple tree. And sparse IRQ mechanism is the new design in this kernel. Uh, I will discuss a little bit more in later. Okay, during um, allocating and initializing an IRQ descriptor structure, this one, the, cross, uh, the related data structures for IRQ hierarchy are initialized as well. For example, child IRQ data, parent IRQ data, child IRQ domain, parent IRQ domain, epic chip data, and this this data structure, IRQ config. And IRQ config data, data uh, the IRQ config data structure is the most important one because this kernel refer this uh, data structure to configure the IO epic routing entry in its uh, reiteration table. Okay. Okay, this uh, GDB screenshot shows that um, the vector number is 57 at this moment, I show here and here. 
And 57 is basically is uh, the ISR IRQ vector calculation. Okay. Uh, see this main call for detailed information, but it's just the transition vector number. You, uh, you, uh, I, will, I will show you later, uh, uh, show here. During uh, kernel initialization phase, uh, this IRQ number is not activated yet because the HCPI device driver is not loaded. So in this kernel, it introduced a spatial vector number 239. The name is IRQ shutdown vector to check the, unactiva the unactivated vectors. Okay, so as we can see, uh, the uh, vector number is changed from zero, this one, to 239. And destination epic ID is changed from zero to here, one. Due to, uh, due to this uh, calculation formula, it just uh, run the one left ship CPU number, and at this moment, the CPU number is zero. So that's why uh, this dis destination epic ID is one. Okay. All right. And this uh, GDP screenshot just want to confirm uh, the vector number is 239. But, pre but please know that a real vector will be determined during IRQ activation when a device driver calls uh, the function request IRQ. Okay, during um, request IRQ phase, um, as we know, the responsibility of request IRQ is to register an IRQ provided by device driver, but the other res uh, responsibility is to find the best, find the best CPU and the better number. Initially, Linux kernel uh, gets this uh, IRQ descriptor data structure from uh, sparse IRQ maple tree, and then calls this function IRQ matrix allocate. Okay, and uh, um, back, uh, vector matrix tracks the available vectors and allocated vectors for each processor. So the CPU selection is quite simple and straightforward the first highest available vectors win. So um, here's an example. For core number zero, the available vectors are 202. For core number one, the available vectors are, are 203. So in this case, the processor, uh, the core number one is selected. Next, uh, let's assume uh, the vector number the selected vector number is 32. I will uh, discuss how to get a vector number when talking about MSI approach. So that for, this, for this moment, just assume uh, the selected number is 32. Some highlights for a vector matrix. It, track, uh, it keeps tracking a vector allocation status for all processors. And it finds the, the best CPU that has the highest available vector. It has the low balance concept and no affinity. And no affinity information is uh, stored in this database. IRQ, comma, node ID. Okay, and this function uh, just want to illustrate that uh, it updates this, this data structure, vector number and CPU. So the vector number is changed from 0 to 32, and the CPU is changed to 1. Next, this function, epic update IRQ config, update uh, the IRQ config data structure. So uh, the destination epic ID is 2. The vector number is changed from 239 to 32. OK. Again, um, this GDB screenshot just want to make sure that the destination ID and vector number are, <coughs> are expected. So in this case, the API ID is 2 and 32, I'll show here, 232. And for this vector number, 32 and 1. 32 and 1. Okay, so the final step is to update the IO epic routing entry 
located in uh, the IO pick hardware. This kernel re uh, refers to this uh, IRQ config and this data structure, IRQ pin list, to update the corresponding IO epic routing entry so that the, upcom uh, the upcoming interrupts can be loaded to the target CPU. In this case, there's a CPU number one. And this screenshot, uh, uh, the breakpoint is uh, uh, when the Linux kernel try to update uh, the IO epic routing entry, uh, show here. As we can see, uh, the vector number is 32, and destination ID is two, uh, show here, 32 and two. And this hardware IRQ is from this one, the pin number nine. Okay, and this uh, slide illustrates that interrupts of uh, two devices, this one and this one, with the same vector number, can be loaded to different processor. So in this case, uh, this entry is loaded to uh, processor number one, and for this entry, it's loaded to CPU number two, because um, CPU number two has the logical I epic ID four. Okay, in addition, the corresponding ISR can be executed correctly due to the per CPU variable implementation as shown here, better IRQ. MSI interrupt delivery. <coughs> when this PCI MSI device uh, wants to generate an interrupt for how IRQ zero, this device locate the table entry from its uh, MSI vector table. After that, uh, issue a memory write based on the table entry. So that uh, the target CPU can accept this interrupt. But the question is that how to allow the list MSI interrupt to CPU uh, processor number two? <coughs> okay, this IRQ, uh, this IRQ 24 is allowed to CPU number two, as shown here. So let's check how this works. First, we need to get the base address of vector table by using LSPCI utility. As shown here, uh, this vector table is located at bar zero, and the base address is this one, along with this offset. offset. So the next screenshot, this one, dump the content of the uh, dump the content of the vector table. And the table, uh, the, this table uh, has the only one available entry. This is for how I Q0, this one. Okay. Again, uh, from this uh, IRQ24, the highway IRQ number is zero. So when uh, this interrupt wants to be triggered, this PCI device locate um, the MSI vector table for IRQ number zero to get message address and message data. After that, uh, issue the memory write. Here is the main uh, message address register format. The most important field is the uh, destination ID starting from bit 12. Okay, based on the content or uh, based on this content, the destination ID is four. So again, uh, the processor with the logical APIT of the logical APIT ID four accept this uh, interrupt. So that's why um, this entry shows that this interrupt is loaded to processor number two. And for this one, message, message data. Okay, here is the message data register format. The most important field is the vector number. Okay, and this content shows that uh, the vector number is 32, as shown here. And this uh, GDP, uh, the, the GDP command uh, dump the IRQ descriptor data structure for CPU number two. Okay, and in this and in this data structure, uh, this screenshot just want to confirm that this IRQ is related to twenty-four. Uh, show here this one twenty-four, and how an IRQ is zero. 
as shown here. And this screenshot confirms that uh, the ISA is mega SARS ISA. Okay, I show here and here. <laughs> Difference uh, for how IRQ vector and IRQ. From this generic plug interface, uh, plug interrupts interface, this column is the v IRQ or core VIRQ. And this column is the hardware IRQ but it related to this interrupt controller. For example, this hardware IRQ2 is based on this IO EPIC interrupt controller. And for this one, this hardware IRQ0 is based on this PCI device. Okay, and for vector, uh, the, the vector number is used to index uh, the IDT entry. Okay, for, for example, vector number is 32. So this entry will be uh, decode, decoded. And, uh, and uh, the IRQ discrete data structure will also be indexed by using this vector number. So this vector number is used by, indexed by CPU, hardware itself, and Linux kernel for this one. <laughs> You might be curious about how Linux kernel manage uh, IRQ number allocation. For the kernel 64 six, or earlier, it employees a, stat, a static bitmap. Okay, and this screenshot uh, shows that the first 16 IRQ are allocated in the beginning of the Linux kernel initialization. And please know that uh, the IRQ number allocation has the has low bound. Okay, basically its low bound is 24. So that's why we saw in the, in the previous uh, slide, the IRQ, the first IRQ is 24. Okay, uh, if you are interested in how, uh, the implementation, you can check this uh, function for detail. However, uh, the bitmap uh, has the limitation because uh, this bitmap size is uh, determined during build time. So there might be a limitation that uh, for high-end server, this IRQ number, uh, this IRQ number might be insufficient for the high-end server. That's why uh, the Linux kernel in uh, 6.5 or later, it gets a new, a new IRQ number from sparse IRQ maple tree because the maple, maple tree can scale the IRQ number dynamic, dynamically during run, uh, during, run down, uh, during run time. Okay, and this uh, screenshot just shows the, the, uh, the low bound is uh, 24 because um, this device driver is the first driver to, uh, to call the request IRQ. Okay. How to get a hardware IRQ and an IRQ number? When calling a list function, PCI allocate IRQ vectors or the affinity version, it requires two steps, uh, two pace, paces. The pace uh, number one is to get a hardware IRQ and uh, allocate a MSI descriptor. Adding this descriptor to X array returns a free index. This free index will be used as a hardware IRQ number. And this hardware IRQ number is stored in this member, MSI index. Okay. The other pace is to get uh, an, uh, an IRQ number from the maple tree, allocate uh, the IRQ descriptor data structures, and initialize the corresponding related data structures. The final step is to add this uh, IRQ descriptor point to the maple tree. Okay. Find the best uh, CPU. Um, again, the, the CPU selection is quite simple. The, fi the first uh, highest available vector win. So uh, for this case, um, processor uh, core number zero, the, the available vectors are 202. Uh, Core number one, the available vectors are 202. 
And for this uh, processor number two, the available vectors are two or three. So this CPU will be selected. This GDP screenshot um, dump uh, the content of uh, CPU number two. The available vectors uh, are CA in hash number, so it's 202. And for uh, this CPU number one, the available vectors are CA in hash number, so uh, it's uh, 202. For uh, this uh, processor number two here, the available vector is CB in hash number, so the available, num uh, the av available vectors are 203. So in this case, uh, core number two is selected. Okay, how to find a vector number? Basically, it's based on the uh, vector matrix. This member system map is the system-wide entries uh, used to uh, track the allocated and unallocated uh, IR, uh, vectors. And those, uh, uh, those vectors include um, section vectors, ISA IRQ vectors, and EPIC SMP vectors. This system map and this uh, man managing map run the logical order, the results, and this allocate allo 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 map uh, run runs another logical order. Here's the final result. Okay. Next, uh, find the next zero bit starting from alloc start. And, but in uh, vector matrix, uh, the low bound is 32. Okay, so it tries to find uh, the zero bit starting from 30 second bits based on this result. Since uh, the 30 second bit is not same yet, so that's why the vector number is 32. Okay, so here's the takeaway. For this case, uh, CPU 2 and vector number 32 are selected for this uh, request IRQ. Okay, the last, uh, the, the last uh, this is the la la last slide. The final step is to uh, update the MSI vector table. Um, when calling a request IRQ, the call page will call this IRQ activate function. And the next column update the corresponding vector number, CPU number, destination, epic ID, and then compose a MSI message. And along with this MSI index, as, uh, like I mentioned earlier, this MSI index is for MSI hardware IRQ. So based on those information, this entry is located and update the corresponding information based on destination epic ID and vector number. Okay, so uh, after this entry is updated, the upcoming uh, interrupts of this PCI device can be routed to the target CPU. So that's all I have today.